If you love to travel, you might think, you know, it's in my genes. And for 20% of you, that may actually be true, backed by science. <laughs> there is a gene called DRD4, and this encodes the dopamine receptor D4. Dopamine, you know, is related to happiness. So this is generally associated with impulsivity and uh, sa satisfying those, uh, those needs for dopamine, those needs for happiness in the brain. So people with this, this gene tend to make uh, pretty quick, rash decisions, if you will, mm -hmm. um, in their quest for enjoyment, in their quest for happiness. And it, this gene is also associated with the urge to travel. There's a variant of the DRD4 called DRD47R, which is nicknamed the Wanderlust gene. Nah. Oh. It's associated with curiosity and restlessness, which are two qualities that do uh, usually go hand in hand with someone who wants to get out there, wants to go, wants to travel, see mm -hmm. new things, do have new adventures. Um, and they're all, they tend to be on the move. They, they just want to, they're just never satisfied with wanting to get out there and yeah. go and explore and have fun. Um, and this is all according to Xuan Sheng Chen, a psychologist at the University of California. I, I think that those obviously you can't argue with science. You know that that's going to be a losing battle. But oh, I think you it can. Does, you absolutely can argue with science. That's part of science. <laughs> I think it goes part and parcel with numerous different things. There's obviously a bunch of different reasons that could go into it. Maybe someone's upbringing. Like I speak firsthand, as you can tell. This is not a Texas accent. What? This is uh, a. <laughs> so I have. I may have. Part of that wanderlust gene uh, in my system because I wanted, but I wanted to go away from Scotland and come to the United States. I don't think that was a gene simply out of uh, wanting to be curious and, and see what the United States had to offer. It was influenced by my upbringing as well. I had a great upbringing, but the area that I lived in and the things that I experienced, I wanted to pursue something different. Mm -hmm. So I think that that played a role. It might have just emphasized, it might have just further enhanced my wanderlust gene. So maybe putting them two together and ba bang you end up in a different place but now i don't feel the urge to travel i feel no, like no. I've, I've i'm constantly not satisfied i'm always trying to pursue something different mm -hmm. but not as much with my traveling genes so I well i actually that. have something to add to that nice. according to national geographic people with this particular gene are more likely to take risks explore new places embrace change mm. take drugs <laughs> oh my francis looks shocked um <laughs> Yeah, it's not gener it's not necessarily only travel. It's yeah. it's having the characteristics related to travel. And there are detractors to the study, but I did want to talk about uh, Chen again and this study that he did. So he found that the people with the 7R variant of the DRD4 gene um, also related to human migration mm -hmm. and the history of the world. So all humans uh, originated in Africa, but then uh, roughly 50,000 to 70,000 years ago, um, People wandered away. People needed to migrate to new new locations. And according to this study conducted by the UCI Minds, 90 plus uh, people who had the have the gene are the furthest away from that original location. Um, and the, the lifestyle is uh, rich with experience and risk and adventure. And those are the generally the carriers of DR D4. 7R. Yeah. It's a, I wish it, there was an easier way for me to remember that gene. There's no abbreviation. It's already abbreviated, I believe. Mm -hmm. There's probably a much longer word for it. But it's amazing how science proves um, to, to pay, uh, I would say, homage to the natural fact that we like to go and explore different things and like to be curious. And it's how most of our countries have been formed, which is even more so, uh, I would say, amazing to me, not to be political here, but to see how in some places, like the United States, certain people feel that it, this country is entitled to them, right? The, the United States is solely the United States, and we are U.S. citizens, and well, not we, but people who are U.S. I citizens am. don't want <laughs> they don't want other people coming in to, to maybe experience it. But that's how the country was formed. Mm -hmm. It was formed through people that have these genes that want to be curious and want to travel. People who are literally genetically, like down to their genes, they want the same things as yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Most people are, are programmed. Most people are programmed in a similar way, as they want to obtain greatness. And they want to try and pursue happiness, I would hope. Um, and well, that all are, comes there, from there going There are some detractors experience. to this. In particular, Kenneth Kidd, he's a gen genetics doctor at Yale University. Mm -hmm. And he said, you can't just reduce something as complex as human exploration to a single gene, which is true. You can't. I yeah. mean, that may explain certain 
proclivities to want to take risks and to get out there and do different things, but that is not the see all and all be all. It's no. it's 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 an interesting idea though. I feel like it's more of the instinct, right? Everyone's got an instinct. I have an instinct that maybe tomorrow I want to go and get Chinese food, but mm -hmm. it really depends on whether I've got the time to go and do it, whether I've got the money to go and do it, and whether like these all these factors this is what I mean comes into it. I had an instinct in which I wanted to go and pursue something different than what was normality. If I didn't have the support of my family, if I didn't have the funding to go, I wouldn't have done it. And maybe that instinct might have been programmed somewhere else. You could have maybe satisfied uh, those those impulses another way. Another way, exactly. So I feel like it, it's amazing to read into it because it, you automatically relate it to yourself. But I feel like every person has an instinct to do something that they want to do. And it just all depends. Uh, I would say I... I would li I like to say that I was able to channel my instinct in a certain way and was able to have the support so that I could go and pursue something I like to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad for people that find excuses not to go and pursue their instinct, whatever it may be, and try and do something. What was your was your instinct to go and be I'm pursue actually, journalism? It is, but I'm a bit of a homebody. I've oh. always lived in Southern California, but I have made weird and unwise career moves, or seemingly unwise uh, career moves before. So it's possible. I mean, it's it's a very interesting picture. I think when we get more into nor the normalization of um, gene mapping or, you know, being able to understand our own DNA, mm -hmm. it could yield some interesting results or it could become the new astrology, as far as I know, uh, which is good or bad depending on how seriously you take it. It's interesting, though, to read our own genes, including this way, and the possibility of the wanderlust gene. Audience, are you, do you, have you been bitten by the travel bug? Is it inside of your DNA? Uh, if you think you have the travel gene or the wanderlust gene rather, I'd like to know about it. Please let us know below in the comments and please like and subscribe for more.